Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be working on this 2008 BMW E70 X5. Now this is not my car, this is a friend's car. I actually went to collect this with him about a month or ago or so now and today we're going to be giving the car a full service. Now when I mean a full service, basically engine oil and filter, fuel filter, cabin filters, engine air filter, coolant flush, brake fluid flush. Have I missed anything? I'm not sure, but I'm sure we'll get onto that in a little bit anyway. But yeah, he's only just got the car. He wants it, you know, he wants to look after it. Uh, we're gonna be doing a few uh, other jobs later on down the line as well, probably uh, transmission service, um, what else, uh, rear diff. Probably gonna be doing a transfer case service as well. And um, yeah, anything that really needs doing. Of course, this is the three liter diesel, so it does have the M57 engine. So we're probably gonna to have to do the swirl flaps, EGR delete, uh, DPF delete, all things like that, which are associated with diesels of this generation. So yeah, I think without further ado, we'll get cracking. But before we get into things today, make sure you hit that like button. It really does help me out and it is greatly appreciated. Now then, let's get cracking. Okay, so just got the engine running then just to get things up to temp just to make sure that the oil flows nicely also gave the car a scan with ISTA a couple of fault codes to note glow plug cylinder 2 is faulty there is an internal fault in the telephone module that's why we have an SOS error pop up when we switch the ignition on and then we have three fault codes for the EHC system Control time fault lifting rear right, control time fault lifting, control time fault lifting rear left. That's why sometimes we have an error pop up with the air suspension. And then a couple of other faults, but they are nothing to worry about, just low voltage when the battery must have been discharged. So just let the engine get up to temp, like I said, and then we will proceed in draining the oil. One thing I have noticed as well coming underneath the car is we do have an oil leak. Now how severe is this oil leak? I don't know. Now you may just think it is the sump plug that's dripping, but as you can see it's wet all around here. So I think this is definitely coming somewhere higher up. Now if we have a look over here as well on the sump guard, it's you know very oily around here. So you know I'd say we do have a decent oil leak right here. Now having a look at the top of the engine, you're not gonna be able to see with the engine cover in place, but I can see quite a bit of oil underneath the intake manifold. Now, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that this oil leak is coming from the rocker cover. Now what tends to happen, the crankcase ventilation breather, if it's not replaced, the it just builds up too much pressure and that oil has to go somewhere. So it just breaks the gasket on the rocker cover. So more than likely we will need to replace the rocker cover gasket along with the crankcase ventilation system. Oh, just remembered we are going to be using an engine oil flush today. I think the last oil change on this was done about 10,000 miles ago. So yeah, using an engine oil flush just can help remove some of the deposits that have built up. So I've got to remove the oil cap, but it's absolutely filled with leaves around here. So we don't want any of this falling into the engine. I'm just going to give this a bit of a wipe. I will be cleaning the entire engine bay once we're done as well because it looks like it's never been done. It makes a huge difference when you do that. Yeah, this oil filler cap does not look the cleanest. Quite a bit of carbon build up on the back of here. It will reinstall it anyway and we'll run the engine for 10 to 15 minutes or so. Okay, so I'll let the engine run for around 15 minutes or so with that engine flushing. I'm gonna remove the oil filter now, which takes a 32 millimeter socket. I like to remove the oil filter first before draining the oil because you will, of course, have some re residual oil drain out of the filter and you want that to 
drain down into the sump before you drain it, ideally. Okay. Leave that in there. Just give things a wipe down. Okay, so there is the old oil filter. It doesn't appear to be crushed or anything, which is good. I've just dropped the oil filter cap back in place while we go ahead and start draining the oil. So while I let the oil just drip away, I'm gonna get started with the oil filter. Already gave the filter cap a good clean with some brake cleaner. Now we can reinstall the new O-ring and the filter itself. Now you need to make sure you get this O-ring in the correct groove. Don't get it in one of the threads as well as you'll have a massive oil leak. Just double check. Yeah, that's in the correct location. Get a nice new fresh man oil filter. Just clicked into place and drop this into the oil filter housing now. This can now be torqued down to 25 newton meters. There we are, perfect. Just give this entire area a good clean down. And now it's time to reinstall our sump plug with new copper crush washer. As you can see, sump plug reinstalled, torqued down again to 25 newton meters, and I gave the entire area a good clean up just so we can check for leaks easier. Okay, so now we can start refilling with oil. Now this engine should take around 7.5 liters, but I have exactly five liters in this jug. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump all this in and then see if we register on the dipstick. We shouldn't, but it's always worth double checking. You don't wanna end up overfilling your engine. There we are, that's five litres in. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and check the oil level. Now you may be thinking, why are you checking the oil level when the front of the car is up in the air? But believe it or not, because the driver is actually on a slope, the car is pretty level right now. So it should get a pretty good indicator. I don't think that's even on the minimum. Oh, it is just on the bottom of the dipstick, not yet at the minimum. So if we can add at least another, another liter at least. It's actually not too far off the max now. Now I know we still have to start the engine up. Obviously the oil filter is dry. That's gonna take up probably best part 500 milliliters. And it is on a slight incline so I'm guessing the dipstick is at the back of the engine so with the car up in the air it will show being slightly more full but I think I'm going to add another half a litre then we'll fire the engine up and then see where the level drops to that's six and a half litres inside of the engine so far then Just check for any leaks. Uh, some plug is bone dry, and so is the oil filter housing. Okay, so I let the oil drain back down. 
I then checked the dipstick and it's right around the minimum and then I added another litre so that means 7.5 litres in total and it should now be right around the max. Of course we will check all of the levels once we have completely finished but I'm pretty sure we are there now with the engine oil. Now I have also went ahead and started to gain access to the air filter. So if you have a look over here, this is what I have removed. So obviously the engine cover just had in by those five Allen bolts. I've also removed the side trim from the air filter box and obviously the snorkel, it goes to the front air intake. This trim piece here and this, these are from, these basically make up the scuttle panel. And then this here again is the air filter box cover. Now the reason that I wanted to completely remove all of the covers for the air filter box is for this reason. So if you have a look in there you can see it's absolutely full of leaves. Now I would hazard a guess and say this air filter box has never been taken apart before. People I'm guessing they just remove the old air filter from the side access and then slide the new one in place and don't even bother to clean this out. So it's always worth taking a few extra steps and getting everything nice and clean. But we can now pull this air filter out. As you can see, this is probably hasn't been changed for a good few years. And that's what's left behind in the air filter box. As you can see, air filter box now nice and clean, ready to receive the new filter. There we are then, new air filter in. Looking nice and fresh. Let's get all those covers reinstalled. Okay, so as you can see, air filter box covers all back in place. The intake ducting is back in place as well. Scuttle panel, that is back in place. Obviously, I'm going to leave the scuttle panel top cover off because we need to access the brake fluid reservoir when we do the brake fluid flush. We also went ahead and removed the other side as well that reveals the cabin air filters. They are just housed in this section right here. If we take a look at the filters themselves, these are absolutely disgusting. These have not been changed in a very, very long time. Do we have a date on them? So they are blueprint. I can't seem to see a date on them. But yeah, I'd say these have been in the car for a good five years or so. I just don't know why people try to skimp on filters. This is the air that you're breathing. This is the air that is coming into your cabin. So yeah, just change out your cabin air filters. It's really not that difficult to do. And this is what a fresh set should look like. Nice and clean. Okay then, so make sure everything is clipped into place. There is a correct way around. There is an arrow on these indicating the airflow. So of course they, the air is going to go through the filter, out of here and into your cabin. So make sure you have it the correct way around. Now we can go ahead and slide this back into place. Okay. Plug the AUC sensor back in. And line this all up and then just twist the nuts so it secures into place. Okay then, so as you can see, cabin air filter box back in position. Now, next thing is the coolant. Now we're doing a complete coolant flush and this has been a complete nightmare. So if you have a look, you probably notice that the fan the electric fan is missing and I've also went ahead and removed the intercooler as well. There's the electric fan, there's the intercooler and that small tray there that sits underneath the intercooler. So why have I removed all that? So typically you would find a drain plug for the coolant on the bottom of the radiator and I went on to real OEM inputted this car's details and it said yes there is in fact a drain plug on the bottom of the radiator so I thought okay I'm gonna have to remove that cover off the bottom remove the intercooler itself 
and there should be a drain plug on the bottom here. Is there a drain plug on the bottom here? No. No, there's not. So, I've done all that, and then I resorted to just disconnecting the lowest most hose, which is this one just here, goes to this cooler here, which I believe is some kind of oil cooler. So I've disconnected that and I've flushed it through a few times now. Best part of a bucket full there. We have pretty much an entire bucket full there and this huge bottle as well. So yeah, we've probably flushed the best part of about 30 litres through. So a good three or four times completely through. And as you can see, that is pretty much clear there now. So I'm pretty confident that we only have pure water in the car. So yeah, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that. I'm just going to let everything drain out the bottom as much as possible. And we can begin topping up with the coolant. Okay then, so as you can see, everything is now back in place. I have already went ahead and topped up the coolant with a concentrated coolant and distilled water mix. Just gonna let this get up to temperature and bleed all of the air out of the system. Then we can switch it off and top it up to the maximum. But as you can see, also went ahead and reinstalled all of the under trays as well. And after this has finished bleeding, we'll move on to the fuel filter, which I believe is under that under tray just over there. So then, fuel filter has been replaced. I installed a nice, fresh new OEM MAN filter. There we are, everything back in place. Now here is the original one. Now you can see it is a Wix filter. Now I don't think this has been replaced in a very long time, similar to the air filter really because it's actually a pretty difficult task to even get to it. So you need to remove all three of these engine under trays. Ignore those, those are the scuttle panel covers. But yes, you have to remove all three of these trays because the fuel filter kind of sits in the middle of all three of them. So yeah, I don't think it's been replaced in a long time, but I've al already went ahead and primed the fuel pump, fired the engine up, and uh, yeah, fires up perfectly, so no issues with that. I guess now I just need to reinstall all of those under trays and then we can get started with the brake fluid flush. Okay, so as you can see, all of those under trays are now reinstalled and I have the rear of the car up in the air because it's time to start the brake bleeding procedure. As you can see, I have my pressure bleeder hooked up already went ahead and drained the majority of the old fluid out. There's a good litre, litre and a half in this container. So we are going to do a full fluid flush, get all the old fluid out, make sure we have some nice, fresh, clear fluid in the system. Okay then, so here goes. Now, when it comes to the brake bleeding procedure, you do want to start on the furthest away from the master cylinder. So in our case, it is the passenger side. Obviously the master cylinder is usually always on the driver's side, so that is completely diagonal. So yeah, we're gonna start on this corner, passenger side rear, and then move on to the driver's side rear, then move on to the passenger side front, and then the driver's side front to finish off. Right, let's crack this loose. You can already see a load of bubbles coming out along with the old nasty fluid. Just let that drain away then, so we have some nice, fresh, clear fluid coming through. And as we can see, we have a nice, steady stream of clear fluid, and most importantly, no air bubbles. So that should be this one now done. Let's repeat and do the other three corners. Okay then, all four corners now flushed. Just need to sort the wheel bolts up now.
Okay then, so to finish off, I'm just gonna give the entire car a good thorough clean. I'm gonna give the engine bay a good clean as well. Like I said, it's probably never had a clean in its life. So this should freshen things up a little bit, make things nice and clean for when you're working in here in the future. Obviously the exterior hasn't had a clean in about a month as well. Look at the state of these wheels. And pretty much the same with the interior as well. Although the interior really isn't too bad. Just needs a good vacuum and a quick wipe over. All right, you don't need to see this. So I'm just gonna crack on and we'll check in with you when we're done. Now, as you can see, we are pretty much losing all light now, but the car is done and it's cleaned up quite well, to be honest. Just a quick walk around. Looking much better. Quick look inside. Yep, looking nice and fresh. All right, let's go take this back to him. Okay then guys, so there we go, full service on the BMW X5 done. Took it back to my good friend Jordan and he seems to be pretty pleased with things. So yeah, that is all good. Now we do actually have quite a few things planned for this car. Plan to do things like EGR delete, swirl flap delete, uh, transmission service, um, rear diff service. Uh, what else? Transfer case service. We, you know, we plan to do a whole lot on this car. So do let me know. Do you want to see more videos on this car? I've had I've had quite a few people ask me to get an X5 for the channel. Um, you know, Jordan being a good friend of mine, I'm sure he'll let me. You know, use the car whenever I need to to make some videos. So yeah, do let me know. Do you want to see more videos on this car on the channel? But yeah, I think uh, I think we'll leave it here. Like I said, it's been a very long day. I'm absolutely shattered now. If you have not already done so, please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.